In today's news, XRP will be worth thousands of dollars. Why? Well, because that's what Wall Street wants. In an article published by FX Empire on Nasdaq's website, no less, keep that in mind, it states XRP price forecast, JP Morgan, again part of Wall Street, cross border payments could drive XRP to $1. Thousand dollars. A report from JP Morgan mentioned Ripple and XRP as entities that could help unlock the $120 billion trapped in cross border payments as XRP as a potential alternative to the SWIFT system, which is very big news. In addition, the American Institute of Physics, the IMF, and the World Bank also spotlight XRP's utility in cross border payments in different reports and furthermore to cite the Bank of England. Ripple noted that cross-border payment sector could grow to an impressive $250 trillion in volume by 2026 to 2027 in the next two to three years, which is very big news. So based on cross-border payments alone, XRP is in high demand, evidently highly sought after, and is projected to be worth thousands of dollars. And need to remind you that XRP has much more in terms of its use case, like the real estate market, for example. But now, as per this liquidity cheat sheet here from Mason vs Lewis, at prices ranging from 100 to 500 bucks, XRP could sufficiently handle daily payment volumes from $1 trillion. But this price becomes less feasible when it reaches 6 or even $20 trillion. Of course, this is because there's not enough circulating supply of XRP to handle these volumes when it's worth less than $1 thousand dollars and again this article still sits on nasdaq's website and nasdaq doesn't exactly qualify as wall street but it is closely related located on wall street itself but predominantly focuses on the electronic trading aspect as opposed to the financial market although this may be subject to change in the near future as the financial landscape is undergoing a drastic shift as we can see in this video from good morning crypto here ripple is running trials with nasdaq take a listen and, you know, this guy sells it to that guy. That's essentially, you know, what the stock exchange does. So um, if you can have a common ledger um, to, to be able to exchange those IOUs at, then that certainly makes sense. And, uh, and there's, uh, there's examples of uh, Korean banks partnering with local, uh, you know, Bitcoin companies for the settlement. Uh, you know, people like the IMF or, or World Bank or all these kind of people are always talking about these sort of uh, blockchain settlement systems, NASDAQ. Uh, is involved in, in uh, I think, doing some trials to Ripple as well. So this is massive news because the financial landscape is shifting to adopt cryptocurrency. So Nasdaq might get involved with Wall Street and become officially a part of Wall Street. Crypto next up adoption is growing rapidly at every level. And again, Nasdaq have published an article talking about XRP on their website that XRP could be worth thousands of dollars and furthermore as per this article it mentions that JP Morgan are reporting and mentioning XRP of course this is not too surprising considering that JP Morgan also want XRP to be worth thousands of dollars that's why they're in partnership with Ripple and that is why we have a video here from Ashley Prosper showcasing that Ripple CEO Brad Garlinghouse mentions the 15 senior JP Morgan executives in his office Take a listen. The idea that JP Morgan isn't actively working in the blockchain and Bitcoin space is not true. Uh, I mean, I, frankly, I don't mind sharing. There are about 15 senior JP Morgan people at Ripple's offices this afternoon. <clears throat> now, unless JP Morgan is going to fire them. <laughs> I, Does JP Diamond know that? I, apparently not. <laughs> anyway, so look, that's my thought on the whole JP Diamond thing. I do think there are people who are going to say this is, you know, uh, in the same manner, a very smart investor said to me, uh, you know, in 1997, the whole West Coast was long Amazon and the whole East Coast was shorting Amazon. We saw how that worked out. And his point was basically, look, you know, the West Coast is obviously bullish and, you know, there's some that are very cynical about these things and, you know, we'll see how it works out. On the, the risk factor, just very briefly, because I don't want to go on too long, but I think what we have to remind ourselves is this has to come back to utility. What problem is the digital asset solving? If it's solving a real problem and it's creating value by solving that problem, then there will be value in the token. I, I think what's risky is there's a lot of these things, as Juan was saying, that like I cannot explain why you need a token. I can't explain what the token does. I can't. I, it doesn't make any sense to me. And I think, unfortunately, I, I think that percentage, particularly in the recent ICO wave, I think that percentage is a very high percentage. I think there is going to be uh, carnage 
to be had from that. And now, best of all to just prove to you how important Ripple and XRP is to Wall Street, to the US government no less, we have this massive post here from Subjective Views. Breaking, Brad Garner will be seated at Rohana's crypto roundtable with other major industry leaders. Republican Rohana, a leader in the Democratic Party, is organizing a secretive blockchain roundtable in Washington DC with key crypto industry leaders including Ripple CEO Brad Garney House to discuss digital asset regulations with Biden's administration. Take a listen. Uh, Mr. Khanna, do you think the SEC is overstepping its authority and are you supporting any efforts for clear and sensible uh, crypto regulation out of Congress? I appreciate the question. I am a co-sponsor of the Commodity Digital Trading Act which actually would provide clarity on the rules for blockchain, the rules for crypto, and making sure that we know what the CFTC should regulate and what the SEC should regulate. I don't ever comment on what agencies do because it would be inappropriate for me to make a statement on what agencies are doing, but I will say that we need clear uh, guidelines. We need to obviously make sure that things that are fraudulent like FTX uh, have no place, but we also need to recognize the promise of blockchain and crypto technology to be decentralizing, to provide people who are users on a platform with ownership uh, and the uh, potential that that has and the recognition that 20 to 30 million people own a form of cryptocurrency. So we need smart, clear regulation so people know what the rules are so we don't have fraud, but that we also make sure that the industry stays in the United States. And I've been working and leading uh, with the Commodity Digital Act uh, on that. This roundtable goes down tomorrow 10th of July and will feature over two dozen attendees from the White House to industry heavyweights like Mark Cuban to Zodak Custody and many, many more. This is absolutely massive, massive news and there's a common trend happening right now. All the major players, the IMF, JP Morgan, the World Bank, NASDAQ, the US government, and then here in this video with European Central Bank President Christine Lagarde, all of them and then some are in agreement that Ripple is a business model that inspires confidence that XRP is the future. It was pre-planned to be worth thousands of dollars. ...who um, survive, but it will be between those who are cannibalized because they are not seeing it coming and they're not embracing it and those who self-induce that cannibalization, and I'm using cannibalization on purpose because it's a bit of a striking, horrible word, but it's really what it means. It's you're going to disrupt your business model, you're going to change it, you're going to reduce your cost, you're going to expedite your transactions, and you're going to continue to inspire confidence because you will build that on the basis of an existing backbone, which is your bank and the confidence relationship that you've established with your customers. So that's where I see changes happening now if you think of circle and ripples and all those that that's where they are active and and uh, helpful and the best part is for those industries that are still yet to partner with ripple they will soon in my opinion of course and they could potentially be running off ripple system in as little as three weeks which is absolutely insane three weeks is all it takes to get a bank's back end system to integrate with ripple once crypto regulations are passed and we are closer than ever now to these new regulations, take a lesson. How long is the implementation process to get started with Ripple? Yeah, so typically we look at about a two to three month uh, basis from start to finish. Um, a lot of that is part of the onboarding process. So we go through a credit review process. We then have an onboarding process. That's relatively straightforward. In terms of the technical integration side, it can take between, I'd say probably one to two months. Um, that includes things like testing, um, integrating into the system, and just general process. Uh, I think the fastest one I've ever done was probably a three-week um, implementation, which was very fast. Um, and probably the slower ones hit that sort of three-month mark. But it's as it's as fast as you can put resources into to making it happen, and we're we're here to support that. Ripple have been diligent, patient, and they have invested millions of dollars to secure their foundation in this financial world, this shifting financial world. And they will be the key to help bringing the crypto industry together in unison. Brad Gardenhouse has more here, take a listen. Holding back crypto at large is tribalism. I, I, I mean, Ripple has invested in over 60 companies. We've invested hundreds of millions of dollars, close to $500 million, and about 60 different companies across the crypto landscape. Some of them are involved with XRP, some of them aren't. 
I truly believe all boats can rise. And I think the whole industry, frankly, needs to stop taking shots at each other and try to like support each other and try to actually help people be successful. So it is for all of these reasons why Wall Street wants XRP to be worth thousands of dollars, for XRP to be a bridge currency for CBDCs worldwide. And this is where the smaller investors, people like you and me, can get ahead of the large institutions before they inevitably announce their XRP ETFs because there will be a shakeout. That's effectively what I believe the last three years have been for XRP anyways, in my opinion, with the lawsuit. But right now, very few retail holders today have a large sum of XRP. Most, including all accounts here on Twitter or X, hold a very small amount. Most people will sell their bags at just 10 bucks. Just 10 bucks. Yes, that is a healthy profit. <laughs> no mistake about that. No doubt about that. But this is where the real shakeout will come in as institutions will use the opportunity to fill up more on their bags for when XRP reaches its true value to be worth thousands of dollars. So don't get shaken out. As Cypress showcases in this post here, allocations to digital assets is expected to ramp up over the next two to three years with 54% of investors noting that they expect an increase in allocation in the next two to three years. This is a marathon, not a sprint. They know what's coming, so you need to get, do your own research and know what's coming too. Don't look short-term, think long-term, and I'll see you in the next one.